Hey, tell you what, if you want to get your life in check, just take a lot of caffeine every day and, and get yourself wired and, and cause a lot of stress in your life and take some, I don't know, some strange drug that induces anxiety for a prolonged period of time. Hello, everybody! I am very, very much buzzing with energy because I've had a very strong coffee. I'm very hyper. Very, very hyper right now. Although I do not sound like I am being hyper because I'm talking with such a strange voice and a very calm and mellow tone that would suggest otherwise. But I am really, really buzzing right now. And I was thinking of ways to improve the energy of my videos and make them more fun to watch. Um, so I've turned to everybody's favorite legal drug, caffeine. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm very buzzing right now and I'm feeling good. So let's get this video done. Today we are talking about something kind of related to caffeine. Sorry about my legs sort of appearing in the video here. I haven't slept as well, which is great. So mental health doing good here from your favorite mental health professional. I'm not, I'm not a mental health professional. Okay, so today's, sorry, I'm really, I'm really dragging this intro out, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Um, today's video, we're going to be talking about anxiety. Is it, is it different for autistics? Is it, is it, is it, is it strange or is it, is it more intense? Is it, is it more physical? Is it more mental? Who knows? Today, I'm going to give you my personal experience with anxiety. Um, I'm no stranger to anxiety. I've had it for pretty much all of my life that I can remember of, um, even as a kid. Maybe I wouldn't be maybe classed as having anxiety disorder when I was a kid, but I definitely got anxious, which is a, a hallmark of autism. I tend to get more, more anxious in situations. Um, but when it came to my teenage years, I, I became more and more anxious. And it's, it kind of hasn't, hasn't left me um, since that, since then, to be honest. Uh, apart from when, you know, I got drinking and stuff, which obviously helps dampen down the anxiety. And, little side note, knew my CBD that I've been taking. I've decided to start vaping my CB CBD, which you may have seen in previous videos. And I've got a new one for Christmas. My lovely brother has uh, gifted me this because he's very into it. And he doesn't, he doesn't vape CBD, he just vapes the Zero Nick e-liquids but yeah this 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 is, is really good and um, it really helps I'm, I'm quite like insensitive to it so I need quite a lot because most people they take like a few puffs of this and they, they feel sleepy and they go to sleep and um, whereas with me because my anxiety is so high and it just doesn't really do the trick unless I have a lot of it so it's not really cost effective but anyways sh shut up Tom Get on with the video. So yeah, anxiety. No strangers to anxiety. I've suffered with um, anxiety that ranges from mild to moderate to severe, and depending on my mental state at a certain time and depending on what's going on in my life. Uh, obviously, exams and stuff are, tend to make it worse, and you know, not not having my girlfriend near me and around me makes it worse and not being around my friends makes it worse so uh, it kind of sounds like i'm very dependent on my friends which is i think it's, it's okay it's okay isn't it okay <laughs> so yeah anxiety i've suffered with generalized anxiety disorder which is just free-flowing anxiety which is, is described of which sounds very nice doesn't that but it's not it just means that you constantly stressed about nothing. It's generally what generalized anxiety is and it affects every single part of your life. Uh, getting up in the morning, doing anything. <laughs> that's, so that's what, that's generalized anxiety disorder. And I also suffer with panic disorder, which I have not had a panic attack in a very, very long time, actually. And that might be, might be down to the CBD, which is it's kind of strange because it's a sort of sometimes like to have a panic attack when I'm feeling really stressed because after I feel good 
um, which I, I've ne I never really feel good until I have a panic attack and then it's after. And then I feel good. So, yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a good thing or not. It, it sort of helps with dealing with stressful situations and not looking like a complete mental freak in public, um, which has happened in the past. But, yeah, I also suffer with um, agoraphobia, which is, is getting better now that my girlfriend's come over. She is helping a lot more with, you know, getting an excuse to get out of bed and just feeling like com comfortable. It's nice to have my girlfriend around, so that's helping a lot. So I'm, I'm kind of pushing myself out of this agoraphobic phase. And it's not a very common disorder. It just means that you associate certain situations with panic. So for me, it's getting out of the house. Um, I don't want to get out of the house because it makes me panic. I don't want to get out of bed because it makes me panic. It sounds really strange, but it's, it, it combined with my very sleepy state in the morning, it's, it's really bad. Um, it's especially when you start to get out of bed, you feel uncomfortable, and then you start getting a panic attack, which is great. So, all good in the hood. <laughs> so in terms of anxiety, you know, you, you get physical effects, you get mental effects, uh, physical effects of anxiety, um, muscle, te muscle tension, all those kind of things, racing heartbeat, um, difficulty breathing properly and breathing normally and at a low pace and a slow pace and a normal pace, any kind of other pace apart from the sprinter's pace, I guess, or the very caffeinated Tom pace. <laughs> Which I can say is, is very pleasurable, so um, um, it's a thumbs up for me on that. Uh, I'll be investing in it, and you'll see me in court. I've got no idea what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, in terms of mental stuff, it can, it can lead you to get into thought loops. It can make you overanalyze things very heavily, sometimes your relationship, friendships. Um, it can impact your work because you can't concentrate, impacts your motivation and it's very highly comorbid with depression, meaning that if you have anxiety you're a lot more likely to be have, have depression because they're sort of this, in the same sort of biological root and mechanism as each other, so if you have anxiety for a long time you, you might be predisposed to getting depression which is always great. A nice little combination of two motivation and functioning destroying mental illnesses that link into each other. Um, so that's that's not a good thing. Um, definitely not a good thing. I don't know who out there is saying it's a, it's a good thing. Is, is there anyone? I'm just making this person up in my head. It's like this YouTuber saying, Hey, I tell you what, if you want to get your life in check, just take a lot of caffeine every day and, and get yourself wired and, and cause a lot of stress in your life and take some I don't know, some strange drug that induces anxiety for a prolonged period of time. The anxiety really, um, for me, and when we're talking about autism and anxiety, I'm comparing my experiences to the general effects of anxiety. I've actually written a literature review where I went over the, the, the links between different um, different functional differences and then anatomical differences in the brains of autistics and compared to neurotypicals and how that can link into anxiety. And I found a lot of very cool, well not cool, but very interesting links between that. So there's, there's definitely a thing there, but it can also mean that we experience it a lot differently. This is when I'm comparing, I'm comparing myself to general publics and general psychiatrists and mental health manuals and people who, who also have anxiety. This is what I'm comparing it to. Um, so I've done a lot of thinking about this. And the main thing that I get from anxiety, which is the most crippling, is sort of a full body discomfort. It's very hard to, to explain. You, you would probably say it was muscular tension. But the thing is, is that I've been to like a massage person, because I was like, a massage person, a masseuse. Or a masseur, and I myself checked out, and they said they said my muscles are fine, like I'm not tense at all, I'm quite relaxed. So it's it's definitely not muscular tension. I think it's due to the the sensitivity of the feedback in the brain, because autistics tend to have a lot more prefrontal cortex 
influence so we have uh, we have a lot more pre pre con pre pre, pre con <laughs> we have a lot more prefrontal cortex influence so it's connected to a lot more areas in the brain more strongly and so we can we're generally aware of a lot more things in our body and our environment and it can you can cause some differences and I think that is one of the main differences for me because I get this this full body discomfort that I can't describe the only thing that I could probably describe it with is sort of like restless leg syndrome where it's not it's, it's sort of a mild restless legs all the time but it's in you it's mostly in my legs but it's all around my body as well sort of like ants just like crawling across your bones like just inside your muscles just something just like vibrating very unpleasantly in your muscles everywhere and all the time and never goes away it's 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 pretty horrible and I think that's because because of my anxiety it obviously um, increases the, the unpleasant feelings in your body having autism I feel like that predisposes you to having more awareness of your muscles in your body so when there's a very tiny amount of discomfort it can sort of feel quite amplified and I feel like that's one of the main causes of my experiences with anxiety being so different to other people's whereby I just constantly feel I don't want to say in pain because that sounds like oh victimise me oh, oh pity me oh please please help me please but it is generally just like pain but not in the sense that you know like sharp pain or dull pain it's just a really weird tension that kind of hurts but in a, in a weird way and that's one of the main things that differs from my experience with um, anxiety compared to the general public and neurotypicals I haven't had the opportunity to talk to any autistics who ha could experience this but if you know if, if, if you if you experience something like this drop it in the comments maybe we can start a new study maybe it can get into research and try and understand this a bit more maybe you know so drop, drop your experience in the comments drop your your knowledge and give me your opinion I will be very much appreciative of your opinion okay so in terms of Mental, um, I'm mental. <laughs> it's sort of a joke, but it's, it's sort of not. And realm is, oh my god, bloody hell. Oh, oh shit, one sec. Need to, need to get this. Just got, a mess, just got a call from an unknown caller. Guess we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> so, back to the, back to the, the job. Uh, mental health. Um, anxiety, yes, there we go. Anx anxiety, autism. Maybe back on track now. And um, so the mental effects. I I feel like, the, well, it's true. Um, autistics generally have a very hard time understanding their own emotions, um, in terms of how they're because you know you can't understand when you're in a certain emotional state. It's very hard to distinguish you know the, the changes that occur when you you're in an anxiety driven state and you're very very highly wired and, and stressed and when you're autistic you can't you can't identify when you're in that state mentally uh, with your brain you can't consciously visualize the state that's that's happening so when when you have generalized anxiety disorder um uh, which is like a very sort of a low level or moderate level of anxiety that doesn't really stand out that much but does affect you quite a lot, quite marked in, in some of the, the effects that it can have on your cognitive ability and your, your outlooks and views and general just feelings on things and this is a very hard, a very dangerous thing because you, you can't because you can't notice it, you can't tell yourself that you're anxious and and that uh, the things that you're thinking and the the, the bad things that you're thinking and um, the anxiety that you have about things, you won't know that that's down to the anxiety. You just think that that's just how you're thinking, and there's there's no sort of influence from any sort of 
pathways in your brain or or and cortisol in your bloodstream, you don't really know that. Um, apart from the physical effects that you, that you can feel, which I, I feel quite a lot, as I've said. Um, but in this state, it can, it can have a lot of effects on socialising. You can just sort of pin it down so, oh, I'm not, not really feeling like socialising tonight, rather than, oh, I'm feeling anxiety, but I should probably go out and socialise and make me feel better. Um, you don't really attribute that to feeling in an anxiety anxiety driven state. Because you don't attribute your irrational thoughts and fears and worries and, and everyday decisions to anxiety, um, you can sort of let the effects of anxiety take a hold of you a lot more easily, um, especially if you have depression and you, the, the effects of anxiety, you, you don't realise that you're under them and you, you make a lot of decisions that um, will probably... <laughs> Hello? Uh, Thomas? Yes. Uh, Thomas yep. Yeah. Alright, bye. Love you. <laughs> so yeah, this can this can influence your, your ability to, you know, stay functioning. So you'll, you'll start not doing stuff that makes you happy because, you know, you're unconsciously, subconsciously affected by your anxiety and you, you're doing less stuff that makes you happy and that can impact your mood and you can generally sort of slide down into a slope of depression without realizing it a lot more easily than you know maybe if you weren't autistic so that's that's one of the other fun things that can happen one of the fun differences i'm just, I'm just trying to think of some other other things that might be a bit different for me so this is a, maybe a bit more of a positive reason um, autistics generally take a lot more of their functioning and their behaviours and their decision making on a more of a logical mindset. Now this conflicts, conflicts a little bit with the not being able to tell when you're anxious, so a little bit of crossover. But in general we are a lot more logical in what we do, um, so meaning the, the logical parts of our brain have more of an impact than the emotional parts of our brain when compared to a neurotypical person. And because of this, that can help us function uh, or, or stay afloat a bit more easily with anxiety, um, unless we, you know, we get, we're having it really badly or severely and we're going for a really bad patch um, in which it can impact you, impact you functioning a lot. <laughs> but again, it's sort of a double-edged sword here again because you don't realise that your logical brain is getting affected by it, affected by emotions. It does have some inputs on your perceptions of things and just how you, how you generally take everything. So this can it can impact your logical brain as well. So as I said, a little bit of crossover, um, but in general we are more logically driven, which can help us make more logical and reasonable and healthy decisions if we want to. You know, it's a whole different ballpark if you if you really don't care about yourself or anything to do with your work life or friend life or relationship life, uh, then it can be it can be pretty bad. Um, but in general, most people I, I, would, I would think that would like to have a healthy life and feel good about themselves and feel good about other people. Um, so you could assume it might help in some ways with anxiety. Perhaps one of the difficult parts of it is that. Generalised anxiety has this sort of free-flowing effect, um, but it also is exacerbated. So if you have social anxiety and generalised anxiety disorder, the generalised anxiety disorder is probably going to make it a bit more intense when you have social anxiety. Because if you're autistic, this can be really, really bad because we generally don't have a good experience with talking to people and um, we're not very good at it in general and there's a mostly in general like a lot in general we're usually not very good at socializing and, and feeling like we're fitting or feeling like we're not trying to play some test or little game in our heads of hey let's play the social situation game uh, which we do have to do on a, on a on a very readily basis if we're trying to socialize with people. And it can impact, again, the, de the depression side of it. You know, make us feel bad about ourselves. 
you have too much in social anxiety, then you can start to th 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 sort of wh 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 whisk you words about and um, can make you come across a bit weird or a bit too hyper or maybe if you're confident it might make you a bit too forward as well because you might just throw yourself into a bit like hey do you want to be my friend which I, uh, i've done before in my past um, i thought it was pretty logical pretty logical like proposition so i'll give you some of my time because i think you're a cool person i'll give you one hour a week and we can we can propagate our friendship and see if it goes anywhere and if not we will Cut off the deal, I will um, get a warrant, a warrant, I will get a restraining order um, put in place if I do not like you enough, and we will go our parted ways. Good sir. But if we do like each other, we can, we can maybe go out for a recreational drug binge on everybody's favourite drug alcohol, and we can get intoxicated and dissolve our boundaries and connect on a deeper level. Yeah, this is generally like how we how we think life is going to go, and you know if if we're anxious and it exacerbates our social anxiety, we may just get a bit of pluck of courage to say something like that and open up to someone like that, but it's not not always very well received um, in a lot of cases, especially if we don't have that much experience as a kid, an adolescent, or a young adult. So it's a bit, yeah, it, it, it depends really, I guess, on the person. So this is gonna, this wrap up the ready, buddy, ready video. The caffeine's sort of wearing off a little bit now, so I can feel a little more level, a little more level heavier. You know, I just, I, yeah, I've got no idea <laughs> what is going on with my brain. I don't know. And if you like the video, make sure to click the like button so that I know you like it. It's pretty, pretty um, self-explanatory reason to why you should hit that like button. Don't hit it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta caress the like button. You gotta sensually, you gotta place your the tip of your finger on the like button and press light pressure on that like button because that. that that like button gets a lot of abuse. It gets hit. It gets smashed all over YouTube. You gotta, you gotta be sensitive to that like button. And just how you are sensitive to that like button, make sure to lightly press the palm of your hand, just this, this bit. This is the magical bit on the subscribe button. And if you're on a uh, an iPad or some kind of mobile device, this may probably unlink the video and, and close the video and and stop it but don't, don't worry about that keep persisting keep opening up that tab and uh, you, you know again i'm kind of drawing on this stupid farce of the analogy Is it an analogy i keep using that word but i keep forgetting what it means i hope that's the right word or else i'm just gonna look like an idiot anyway like the video like it if you want to see some more content by me, your favourite little Aspie, favourite little Aspie Tom from Asperger's Growth, uh, make sure to subscribe. Click the little notification bell, just give a little ding, and then you'll get notified when my videos come out, which are very infrequent and for the time being. Maybe if we get more, a bit more views, a bit more subscribers, I'll start to upload a bit more frequently and regularly in a certain pattern so that I don't surprise anybody or worry anybody yeah anyway thank you very much for watching this video i appreciate it a ton i'm not just saying that because that's a script i don't have a script for this video and i do like to say it from my heart thank you very much you have been very kind you are being very kind with your time and your watch hours and your, your surfing the internet so thank you and do something for yourself Treat yourself. Just scroll down, scroll down that page. Head to those comment section. Just say, hey Tom, I need a bit of a pick me up. And I'll say to you, howdy partner. How are you doing? Hope you're feeling good. Look, it's a weird video, so I'm gonna, gonna end it here.
Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. You've been great. I've been great. <laughs> it's been a bit of a duo here. With the, you know, some cities you go in here. I can see some romance coming on, you know what I mean? Mm, baby. See you later, guys.